Well, hello, folks. This is Bill at Bill Reddick Outdoors. If y'all are like me, I ain't never made a whole lot of money. And so I had to try to do things uh, where I could save a dollar or two. And living out in the country with all kind of uh, things like four-wheelers and uh, tractors and trucks and cars, uh, lawnmowers, they all got tires on them. And at some point in time, you're going to have a flat or either they're going to wear out and you're going to need to change them out. And if you've ever had to take a, a small tire somewhere, uh, they charge you a pretty good bit of money to change that thing out. My brother, he's got a lawnmower that was needing some tires on it. He noticed a, a little machine, Pittsburgh Mini Tire Changer. It's for changing small tires such as lawnmowers and four-wheelers and stuff. And they also have a bigger one for automobiles, I, I believe. You're supposed to actually mount it on a table or something, but of course we don't ever do things like you're supposed to. I got a little old anvil table that I used to carry with me when I was traveling around shoeing horses. So we just decided to put it in a little bit of ice on that anvil table. And it's it's working okay, but you really have to watch it because that table will turn over on you because it don't have a very wide base. I think it's well worth the, the money that he paid for it. It'd be a good idea if you check your lug nuts every now and then because these were loose and it started to wallow those holes out some. Now, if this was a car or truck, you wouldn't want to go back with this, but this is going on old lawnmower, so we're just going to tighten them up real good and hope for the best. And another trick when you're fooling with these tires is find you a good sunny spot. Let that thing sit out in the sun for a little while, and it'll limber it up and make it a little easier to work with. And that's the little old machine right there. Hold that up, Mark. See, it's got a, it's got a handle that you use with it. And it's, it's got a, a pry bar thing here. I don't know the proper name for it, but it comes in a couple of pieces. I think it'd be a bead breaker. Bead breaker, I guess. And the little old thing works pretty good to me. Y'all take a look. Put the tire on and center it. And then take this piece, put the cone down, flip it over and that centers, and then you got your spacers. They just fall on there. And then you have to put this piece on and it's threaded on one end. You put the thread side down. This side's not threaded. Now this does take just a little bit of elbow grease. That's what I got this guy here for. You gotta get everything set just right. Look at there. I have spent a day trying to do this before and get it just a little bit and spray oil around that rim and let it sit. Then the next day, come out and turn that tire over and do the same thing, spray oil around the bead on that side of the rim and wait another day and let it soak. Then come out and, and break that thing loose finally. Work myself to death. Man, this little thing here, it's been pretty handy. It's not a big industrial machine, so there are a little few things you have to do. Once you get the side broke there, then you have to take all your stuff loose and flip the tire over so you can work on the other side. We've, we've learned when you're trying to tighten this tire down, you, you tighten it as much as you can and turn the tire a little bit, then you can tighten it a little more. Turn the tire a little bit. Tighten it a little more. I'll do the grunting. Boy, that was tough. <laughs> if you have problems with it breaking that bead, uh, let off the pressure and adjust your your thing that's <laughs> pushing on it just a little bit one way or the other get it just the right spot and it pops pretty easy of course it really helps if you're about 260 pounds when you pull it on that thing once you get it broke loose you take that little bar tool and get it under that tire and brace it against that piece right there and start working the way around And it just runs that baby right off of there like that. Look at that, that's done. 
you know how long that would have took me and how many busted knuckles I'd have trying to use a couple old screwdrivers to get that thing off. Then you just repeat the process and go down and get that bottom side. When it comes to these valve stems, I'm going to leave that valve stem in there and put that valve core back. It'll save you a little money. Now, true, you stand a chance it may uh, pop out next week or something, but you stand that chance with a brand new one. But there ain't nothing wrong with that valve stem if it ain't been leaking. Just put your core back in there and use the thing again. Save you another four or five, six bucks. When you're going to air your tire back up, if you leave that valve core out, more air will go through there and you'll stand a better chance of that thing getting aired up. And there you have it. I spend most of my time sitting in this chair. This guy back here did all the work. <laughs> Just remember, folks, whether you work or play, I hope you have a nice day. This is Bill Reddick Outdoors. See y'all.